Hey friends, in this video, I want to talk to you about four ways that Jesus reveals the Father's heart for us. The idea for this hit me one night when I couldn't sleep, and I was thinking about how Jesus said in John 14, 9, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so then I realized that I could probably just look at events from the life of Jesus in the Gospels, and it would be a picture of how Father is towards me and towards all of us. We could examine how Jesus spoke and, and what he said, the things he did in certain situations, and it would be a perfect picture of Father's heart and what Father is like, who he is. We get to know Father by looking at Jesus. That's what Jesus said, right? Now, I was just thinking about how so much of his ministry pointed to the Father and declared the Father. You know, he said, I've manifested your name to them, and he even taught us to pray, our Father. And so I... uh Got my phone, you know, got it really dark with the light so I wouldn't wake up my wife because it was the middle of the night. And I started going through the Gospel of John. I was like, I'm just going to start in John and start reading and see where these things jump out to me. And that's as far as I got. I got John chapter 1, and I've got three things that I want to share with you from John chapter 1, from the life of Jesus that actually just reveal how Father is towards us and how much he loves us and 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 the way he is towards us, just the ways of God, you know. So I'm Jeff. This is the Majesty and Mystery Tour. Please like, subscribe, and share. Let's jump right in. Three examples from Jesus's life that we see in John chapter 1. The first one is that Father notices those who follow him, okay? John chapter 1, verse 35. The next day, John, this is John the Baptist, stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And so two of his disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned, and seeing them following him, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. There are, there are no accidents in the scriptures. The Holy Spirit crafted the word of God for us. And it says, Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, what do you seek? It's the same with us. You know, Father notices those who follow him. We might feel like we're chasing him. We might not be experiencing the presence of God like we want to be. We might wonder, sometimes God feels distant. But listen, if we're praying, if we're in the word, if we're worshiping, if we're loving well, God notices, God sees when we follow him. He notices that we're following him. And sooner or later, he's gonna say, hey, come on, see where I'm staying, catch up and come stay with me. So that's just a really cool insight from the life of Jesus. Father notices when we follow him. And these two disciples, they hadn't even met Jesus yet. They just saw John the Baptist saying, this is the Lamb of God. And so they're chasing after Jesus. They didn't know the first thing about him yet. Their knowledge of God was very small. And yet God still noticed, Jesus still noticed that they were following him. It's the same thing with us and our Heavenly Father. We might have a very limited knowledge of God, but he sees those who follow him. Amen? Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is this. Father knows who we are, and yet he calls us into the person he has created to be. He sees us. He knows who we are, who we think we are. He knows the person that everyone else thinks we are. He sees that. And yet he still calls us forward into the destiny and the purpose that he's created us to be, into our true identity in Christ. And I got this from John chapter 1, verse 42. It says, And he, Andrew, brought Peter to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, when Jesus looked at Peter, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. This is really interesting. Jesus accepted him, welcomed him into the little group they had at that point. And he says, look, I know who you are, but I'm saying that you're going to become this guy. I see you for who you are today. I'm acknowledging that. But there's a higher purpose for you that you were created for. And I'm going to tell you what that is right now. I'm going to call you into it. Man, it's just such a picture of how Father accepts us, acknowledges us, even right where we're at, but then affirms the identity that he's created us to be, that he's calling us into. We see shades of this in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I'll give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Man, he's like, Peter got 
the name and the stone all in the same thing. And here in Revelation 2, 17, he's saying, hey, listen, the one who overcomes, that means us that are faithful to the end at the coming of the Lord Jesus, or if we go to glory before the Lord should return. He's saying, listen, if you're faithful to the end, you will be a stone and you'll be given your new name. I see who you are. I get who you are. I love you for that, but I'm calling you into a higher purpose and a higher identity. Isn't that great? The third thing is this, is that Father has watched over us for our entire lives. There's never been a time when God wasn't watching over us. John 1, 47 to 51. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, there are lots of possible interpretations of Jesus seeing Nathanael under the fig tree. And we won't know until we get to glory. The Bible just isn't clear and doesn't say. But you can think of this symbolically. Jesus said, I saw you and you were under the fig tree. You can think of the fig tree meaning the fig leaves that Adam and Eve had sown to cover their nakedness in the garden. And being under the fig tree is like still being in Adam, still being unsaved, still being in that condition. It's pretty powerful. Think of it that way. To think that Father sees us even when we're lost not lost to him, but still unsaved. Another possible interpretation is that there's a tradition at that time. We know this from some of the early writers. There was a tradition that the mothers from Bethlehem laid their babies under fig trees to hide them and keep them safe from Herod's wrath when he ordered that all the male children in Bethlehem be killed to try to snuff out the life of the Lord before he could grow up to be the king of kings and lord of lords. And so they had this tradition that the mothers would hide their male babies under fig trees. And so it's almost like Jesus saying, look, I saw you when you were in hiding. I saw you when you were hidden away. I saw you when no one knew where you were. It's another very good interpretation. And then there's another one, which was just, Philip was literally sitting under a fig tree, you know, that's very real possibility as well. And we'll never know which one it is until we get to glory. But the point is this, in any case, it shows us that we have been seen by God from day one. We have been seen by God the Father and watched over by him every second of our lives. It's also interesting that Jesus said to Nathaniel, you accept me and believe because I said, I saw you then, but you're about to see even greater things than that. And I think it's fascinating because that reveals to us that when we come to Jesus, we're like, wow, you've been watching over me my whole life. We look back and we see, wow, you, I've seen your hand here and I've seen your hand there. But the Lord would have us look forward with him where we start to see God moving right at the moment he's moving, where it's not always in hindsight that we notice God was watching over us and active in our lives, but we're actually moving forward in life, hand in hand with God, recognizing his acts in our life and his ways in our life and responding accordingly and working with him. Isn't that beautiful? Those are just three things from just John chapter 1. I'm sure if we were to go through every chapter of the Gospels and other places in the Word, we would see all these examples of how Jesus shows us how Father really is towards us, right? He notices those who follow him. He knows who we are and who we think we are, and yet he calls us into our true identity, and he's watched over us our entire lives. I want to give you one more thing. This comes from John chapter 17, but this is from the Lord Jesus' own testimony. Father loves us with the same love that he loves Jesus, his son. This comes from John chapter 17, starting in verse 24. Jesus is praying and he says this, Father, I desire that they also, the ones that you have given me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. Listen to this. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Wow. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Man, Father loves us with the same love that he loves Jesus Christ. Let that wash over you for a minute. And this love isn't an external concept. This isn't like just knowledge that we're trying to grasp. He says that the same love 
with which you loved me would be in them, that it would be an inner experience of the heart, being loved by God. Wow, before the foundation of the world. And Jesus prayed for us. In this prayer, he said in John 17, the high priestly prayer, he said, I not only pray for those here, but for all who would believe through their testimony. He prayed for every generation of believers to come. He was praying for everyone that would come into the kingdom throughout the rest of time, and that includes you and me. And part of that prayer was that we would know the same love internally, that we would have the inner experience of the love of God, the same that God has for his son, Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? So take another look at the events in the life of Jesus in the Gospels. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you how Jesus is demonstrating Father's heart for you. Go to the Gospels and, and read about Jesus and how he acted and the things he said. And the Holy Spirit will just reveal to you, Father loves you the same way. Father does the same thing. When the Lord shows you these things, share it with us. Just come back and share it in the comments below so that we can encourage one another in the love of God. The scriptures tell us to see how we can encourage one another to love and good deeds. So sit with the Lord, go through the Gospels, learn some ways that Jesus showed the Father's love for you, and then come back and share it. I really appreciate you guys watching. If this has blessed you, I'm sure it's going to bless someone else. So please like, subscribe, and share. I'm Jeff. This is the Majesty and Mystery Tour. Thanks so much. Bless you guys.